Ghana Blade is a working man shmup. It's not a game that's doing anything new or out of the box that's gonna blow your mind and make you say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've gotta check out Ghana Blade. You've got to play Ghana Blade. But if you are a fan of the genre and you're looking for a solid, well-crafted, no frills experience, Ghana Blade is for you. If you drink your coffee black straight out of the brewer, that is Ghana Blade. And so as I've been playing the game over the past few weeks, there weren't any moments where I really stood up and said, where did they come up with this? Or, wow, that's something I've never seen before. But there were a lot of quiet moments as I'm analyzing the game's design where I nod my head and go, that's smart. The designer knows what he's doing. He's familiar with the genre. He's avoiding a lot of the pitfalls and making a lot of very wise decisions. Ghana Blade, in a nutshell, is a cross between an old school Toplan style shmup, which can go wrong in a lot of ways. And I think luckily Ghana Blade avoids a lot of those pitfalls and then mixes in this style with a more modern bullet hell sensibility. And I think the overall product is very strong. It creates a very good bridge for pretty much all audiences out there, where if you're a fan of old school shmups, if you're a fan of Toe Plan, that type of thing, I think you will enjoy Ghana Blade's level design. But if you're also a fan of Bullet Hell and Cave and Toho, there's also a little bit in there for you as well, especially during the boss fights. Very well made, very smart. I really like the presentation as well. It kind of reminds me of like an NES Final Fantasy game, the graphical style. Again, the graphical style, it's so interesting to talk about this game overall because nothing about it really stands out as like, whoa, I've never seen that before. But it also avoids being generic too. Like the graphical style, it's sprite art, 2D of course. The vast majority of shmups are sprite art, 2D. It's kind of going for that 16-bit sort of look. But the fact that it's drawing a more Final Fantasy Dragon Quest sort of look with the enemies in the background. I don't know, it really works for me. I really like that direction. And then it has a lot of really nice, subtle choices, like looking at the backgrounds again, nothing about them really stands out as like, whoa, like you'll see in, you know, Treasure Games, Radiant Silver Gun, or even something like Grindstormer. Some of those backgrounds make you really turn your head but they're not stale either. There's enough going on there. There's some great moments of background transitions where you come into the stage and it begins with sort of a generic space looking thing. But then before you know it, you're coming down and you're seeing a more ground-based, rich, detailed background. I liked moments like that. And also there's moments where it integrates the background with the overall gameplay. Like you'll see this sort of transparent layer that gives you a preview of the enemies that are going to be coming on screen but unlike something like ray force where you use that background to attack instead it's kind of just giving you a forewarning and then you're going to have to fight it in the foreground and i think this is a really smart compromise because you're not going all the way with the ray force you know we're keeping it more of that traditional style but at the same time, one of the big frustrating things about Toplan style level design where the enemies will come in from the sides or the back is that you don't really have much warning for when that's going to happen. So you have a lot of hard memorization that needs to occur. And so I think finding that nice compromise where you're getting a bit of a warning cuts down on the hard memorization, but also keeps that watch your back sort of dynamic. And then also like older Toplan games, it has the switching power up where as it floats on the screen, it will scroll through three different options. What I like about this game's implementation of this system is one, they really cooled it on the movement of the power-ups and also let them linger on the screen a little bit. Because with older Toplan games, or like with Raiden, for example, where you have the power-ups, usually the power-ups are really erratic and sort of flying around the screen in crazy manner. And so sometimes the power-ups can be more of a burden and a danger than an asset. This game really tones that down, makes the power-ups not 100% static and predictable, but really keeps them pretty contained. And also I like the number system rather than the color system only because the numbers help you remember, I think, a little bit. Oh, there's three different options. One, two, three. A little bit of visual communication that I really appreciate. So again, it's taking these older design sensibilities of Toplan and updating them just a little bit. Not too much, but just enough to give them a more predictable, reliable feel. And then there are two different ship types, the red and the green, both with cute little pilots. 
And something that I discussed in a previous topic video is that I wish shmups would find more ways to integrate these characters into the actual gameplay. I'm not saying you have to fly as the characters Toho style, but just think of a few more ways to get the characters, whether they're appearing on screen during bombs or maybe having little portraits that talk. Or another idea I had was to have some little animated sequences in the gutters of the screen so they're not interrupting your gameplay, but just little things going on in the gutters with the characters to kind of keep them in mind and make them feel like they're a little bit more integrated into the gameplay. This is something that shmups across the board are struggling with, but this is something I really want to see because you buy Ghana Blade, you see the cute characters on the front, but they're not really in the game all that much. One of the fun parts about it is when you get the kill on the boss, the character immediately appears on screen. The end screen comes like during the death animation of the boss. I think this is really cool. I haven't seen a shmup do this before, but usually what happens is when you kill a boss, there's the long death animation, and then you go through a nice transition screen, and then you get to the end of the stage screen. Not the case in Ghana Blade. It actually occurs like the second you kill the boss, it goes into the transition screen, and then it comes back into the stage, and the stage fades into the next stage. I think that's pretty cool. And then speaking of the gutters, something about this that did annoy me is this new trend that we're seeing that we'll call it the Toho trend, where a lot of shmups coming out now are not allowing for Tate anymore. They're being built for the 16 by nine, even vertical shmups that are more rooted in an arcade style, even them are starting to shift away from allowing Tate. Instead, what it's doing is that it's using the gutters of the screen as like previews for things that are spawning in. I think that's cool, and if you are playing horizontal, I like that to be an option, but for me, I still really prefer the option to opt out of the preview gutters and go with a traditional vertical orientation. Just because it's an option for the horizontal doesn't mean you need to force the vertical players to now play horizontally, especially if you're one of the players that has a dedicated Tate setup like you can see here. This CRT is rotated on its side so I can play shmups in Tate. I cannot play Ghana Blade on this setup. There's no way I'm rotating this CRT back just to play Ghana Blade on it. So I really want the game to have a vertical option. This is my biggest critique of it actually. And I just don't like this trend. Stop, stop. But anyway, let's dig into some of the nitty gritty of the gameplay. So you have the two different ship types. Each ship type has three different sub weapons. Some sub weapons, in my opinion, are just better than others, but it does seem like from time to time you want to switch the sub weapons for different areas and to route it that way. Probably for scoring as well. I'm not too in depth with the scoring of this game, but one thing that is interesting about the scoring of the game is that it ties in with the survival via a shop system. So the way it works is the better you score, the more stuff you can buy in the shop, which makes survival easier. I think this is pretty cool, and I also like that the game removes the shop system if you want to play in EX Retro. What Retro is, is it gets rid of the shop system, and then it gets rid of the sub weapon, so you're playing a more traditional arcade experience. But I think for new players, I really like the addition of this shop system because it's not too RPG, it's not too twiddling around. It actually has a lot of utility to help incentivize you to learn the scoring and the more you score, the more money you get, which then you can use on higher health upgrades or higher power upgrades. Though I do think the shop system is too big. They should have cut it down and simplified it even more. It's simple, but it should have been even simpler because there's at times where I look at stats, I'm like, that's w speed. <laughs> Forget that. Let's focus on HP and shot power, baby. So uh, yeah, the shop system I think is cool, but it could have been simplified down even more. But what I do like is that if you're not scoring and if you're not getting a bunch of money, it still feels like the game is pretty well balanced around just playing normally. You could probably do no upgrade runs of it and kind of have a little bit of extra challenge. And speaking of difficulty, I would say this game is a bit on the easy side. If you're the average player, I think this is going to be the perfect match for you. You're going to come in, you're going to play arcade mode, you're going to play hard mode, you're going to have a really fun time. It took me a few attempts to get a 1cc in hard mode, probably 
four or five attempts and I did have to practice some of the stages and stuff like that. But getting the hard mode 1cc was fun and satisfying, but I felt like, mm, you know, that was maybe a little bit too easy. And then I played EX Retro. I think EX Retro was like the true mode of the game, like the, okay, you're a, you're a hardcore guy, you're gonna play EX Retro. But even EX Retro, like a Jamers type player, like a really high tier super player, they're gonna breeze through this game and destroy it because it's really fair and well balanced and it has a nice auto bomb system like everything's really well done but it doesn't have that edge that makes you go ah, for better or for worse and so if you're looking for some real meaty challenge i think this game is going to be a bit light on that but if you're the average player or even a bit above average i think the ex retro mode is still tense and difficult enough to keep you engaged for a good while and playing the game is fun though so like this is a 1cc that even if you're not thinking about playing the game long term and dedicating to it and going for high score records and stuff like that it's still a fun time to play just because of how polished and well made it is and what i ended up gravitating towards was the green ship with the homing weapon type Oh boy, I think for scoring, it's probably not a very good weapon type, but let me tell you, for survival, the homing type is top notch. It is top tier, especially in EX Retro, because in EX Retro, you don't get the sub weapon attack, where in normal and hard in EX, you have a sub weapon that you're able to power up with item collection, a lot like Blue Revolver, actually. But when you get into the retro mode, they take the sub weapon away and then you're just down to your primary weapon and the homing type in the EX retro mode, at least for survival, is really good because overall in most shmups, like homing is going to be naturally the best weapon type just because it naturally suits the gameplay so well because you can just focus on dodging and let the game take care of killing things for you. Usually they balance homing options though, like in Toho with making the homing shots weaker what one that is balanced sometimes no doesn't balance it that way but the ideally you want to make them a bit weaker so that it takes longer to kill things so there's that trade-off there but i feel like the homing weapons in this game are pretty powerful so they just seem like an overall win at least in terms of survival and on the subject of getting a 1cc i do like that the game has a stage select I think that is a bare minimum when it comes to training options in the year 2023, but I think it is a bummer. It doesn't have a proper training mode, especially with a boss select, because as you get further in the run, the bosses are gonna end up being one of the main barriers. And so not being able to just go in and do effective boss practice, uh, I'm not a fan of that. I hate when shmups don't have that in there. So that's another, I think, glaring omission with this game's overall release. And then no online leaderboards. I don't think there's any online leaderboards. And if you don't have an online leaderboard, that's kind of like releasing a fighting game without online net play. Sure, you can try to communicate with other players and use external websites and YouTube and stuff to show your scores off, but there's nothing better than an online leaderboard with replays built in. That's where you can really get some meaty, good competition. And I'm not a fan of Steam sort of like back alley style online leaderboards either. I uh, had quite a fun experience with that in Don Mako Limited 3, where I thought I got the world record because I was looking at YouTube and I was looking at like the online external websites that people were using to put their replays and scores on. But apparently Steam had this sort of back alley leaderboard system and I was like, oh, I have a world record. It turns out, no, <laughs> there are a bunch of players with higher scores than me, but I didn't know that leaderboard existed. So not a fan of that either. Put your leaderboard inside your game for the love of God. And so let's finish off with a few technical notes. This game was made in Unity. You can tell not only because, you know, it says Unity and all that, but the actual launcher for the game, I think is the default Unity logo or something like that. And the reason why I point out that it was made in Unity is I'm not really a huge fan of shmups being made in Unity. Not because I have anything against it or anything like that, but because they tend to be on the laggier side. And if you want to get the input lag to be more reasonable, you have to force this damn engine to turn off V-Sync. And so when you go into the options, it's awesome that the game upscales so much. You can get some really crisp looking sprites with the upscaling, but it doesn't have a V-Sync off option. You can't even turn off V-Sync through the options menu. 
and I don't know how to change INI files for Unity, so I had to go into my NVIDIA settings, and I recommend everyone else do this as well. Go into your NVIDIA settings and force the game to turn VSync off. That makes a massive difference because with VSync on, it's pretty laggy for a PC shmup. I didn't break out the input lag reader, but I could feel, no, 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 this ain't working. So I went ahead and forced off VSync. I highly recommend that you do the same. But overall, Ghana Blade, a really solid, well-made, working man shmup. If you are a fan of the genre, especially in the year 2023, we haven't had a lot of releases. I definitely recommend checking it out. It's very affordable. It's very humble. It's very well-made. And I think it is worth some playthroughs. I think it is worth playing through if you're the average player and getting it once you've seen it. I think a lot of players could unexpectedly connect with it. And no, just in case you're wondering, there is no sword mechanic of the game. Sure, it's called Ghana Blade, but there's no sword mechanic to be found. Just another one of those kind of random but cool sounding shmup titles. So if Ghana Blade, I do recommend it. It is a good time. And thank you to the patrons. This game was the monthly Patreon voted review. And so I probably wouldn't have checked it out without them. And they have really good taste. And so thank you to them. Please like, subscribe, tell all your friends. Adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100 100 Accepting Panda, Admiral Coconut, Anhold, Alexander Pfeiffer, Anthony A, Arcade Hell, Arrow Viper, Autoname, Beam Pit, Bo, Ben, Beto Dames, Bog Hog, Borgie 22, Chase Palumbo, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Clara Cliff, Climby Coyote, Coast, Color Boy, Cook Sand 666, Cook Some Soup, Krusty Boy, Des Audio, Dan Chi, Darren Griffin, Dave Hansen, David Crespo, Delta Tango 6, Dick Jones, Dingo, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Dr. Bosky, Elias Alonzo, Evan Serafet, FCK, F Deluxe, Friskin, Frames Per Human, Francisco, Full Set, Game Boy Grew, Geese Machine, GPM, Houseu, Jake Ryan, J Lab, JBRPG, Jink Hans, John Kelly, George Sand, K, K2, K Horse, Contain, Praise the Boys, Low Casting, Myashpa, Malaise, Mars Bar, Matt O'Leary, Maz, Magneth 859, Minung, Munro, Nathaniel Davis, Neon Dagger Games, Oakla Googles, Pedro Perez, Psycho Blizzard, Queen Charlene, Rafael Trujillo, Raul, Real Skeen, Retro Schmupper, Riff Mason, Rolf 015, Ryan Bartlett, Scanline City, Cisa FW, Shazzy, Shmup Junkie, Sierra Pong, Spiders STG, Steady AI, Steve Fiction, Street Magic, Super Funk, SW, 1335, Tamzarian, Takara Mucho, Taze Ryu, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, Toho Rizardi, Tsugumo, 2YU, Twilight EX, Unicorn Roots, Ursua, Ushimushi, Vic Viper, Beautiful, Wabby Lakes, Zachary Patton, and Zeal. <laughs>